7. Malm Levine, citing John Stuart Mill, takes the position that the right to use cannabis or any substance is unqualified. Well, not everything Mill wrote should be enshrined as principles of fundamental justice. In my submission, not everything Mill wrote should be enshrined, nor should it be dismissed out of hand without comment. Mill qualified these rights himself when he wrote the words, quote, so long as what we do does not harm them. Two sentences before the word unqualified appears. Eight, the psychological stresses on cannabis users, growers, and dealers from cannabis prohibition are not, quote, serious, unquote. In my submission, there is no more stressful lifestyle for a harmless person than to be a cannabis criminal. Every day we get ripped off in the black market or police take their dogs walking through the parks or schools or ferry boats or set up roadblocks or drug tests or background checks. Every day, more grow-ups are raided at gunpoint. Even the Harm Reduction Club was raided at gunpoint. Every day, thousands of Canadians get raped or die behind bars. Every day, people's property, even their own children are taken away. Relationships are destroyed. Criminal records interfere with our employment travel or even just renting an apartment. Now, one witness, Professor Alexander, was going to talk about cultural genocide. It is submitted that the war on cannabis users, growers and dealers meets all the criteria for genocide found in Article 2 of the 1951 UN Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crimes of Genocide. 9. The appellants are asking for the right to be intoxicated. In my submission, intoxicated sounds too much like impaired. More accurately, we are 1. asking for the right to be stimulated, relaxed, and euphorified in the manner of our choosing, and 2. to do any other activity the government fails to prove is not inherently harmful to others. 10. Herbs like cannabis should be put to the same safety standards and tests as pills and hazardous products. In my submission, those safety standards were not created due to concerns over herbs, they were created due to concerns over pills. If cannabis is, cannabis is the only herb in Canada that has to pass these tests. If cannabis is not soon treated like any other herb, one day all herbs may be treated like pills. 11. The legitimate state interest is to create a, quote, reduction in the consumption of cannabis, unquote, not merely to reduce abuse. In my submission, if the state was actually interested in our health, then users would not get fined and forced into treatment and encounter groups and community service or thrown in a very unhealthy jail, or stressed out by fear of such. 12. Marijuana, this is a quote, marijuana clearly is not a benign substance and potentially is more harmful than is presently known. Well, in my submission, caffeine is even less benign than cannabis. Caffeine has more overdose deaths, overuse deaths, greater short and long-term health risks, more serious withdrawal symptoms, and more dramatic impairment symptoms than cannabis. In fact, the only category in which properly used cannabis is more risky than properly used caffeine is the category of impairment symptoms of novice users. So what's next? Coffee prohibition? Will caffeine then become another dangerous white powder? 13. Bronchial pulmonary harm and psychomotor impairment are inherent harms that cannot be avoided, mitigated, or reduced. In my submission, we must first recognize that even without any cannabis harm reduction education programs, there is little evidence of serious cannabis-related bronchial pulmonary harm or cannabis-related vehicular mayhem in Canada or anywhere else. Sufficient evidence of cannabis harm reduction has been put forward. The burden of proof is now on the Crown to prove that harm reduction doesn't work. 14. To satisfy Canada's treaty obligations, Canada must criminalize cannabis using, growing and dealing. In my submission, Holland has signed every treaty Canada has. Utilizing the Constitutional Supremacy Clause found in the treaties, along with concepts such as sovereignty and expediency, Holland has successfully argued that their experiments 
in licensing cafes do not run afoul of the treaties. The treaties can also be amended or withdrawn without penalty. Also consider the international human rights, anti-slavery and anti-genocide treaties we all have signed. Surely these trump these less important drug control treaties currently being contested all over the world. 15. We do not have a quote, cultural tradition of marijuana use, unquote, as we do with alcohol that would extend Section 15 protection to marijuana users. Well, in my submission, testimony from Sergeant Dion and evidence accepted by Justice Curtis indicate a long-standing cultural tradition of marijuana use in Canada. 16. The health risks of tobacco have now, quote, become clear, unquote. In my submission, what is clear is that tobacco-related lung cancer originates in the chemical phosphate fertilizers, which have all been proven to be radioactive. What is clear is that the Kaiser Permanente study and all other studies on lung damage of marijuana smokers show no sign of impairment other than maybe some bronchitis in heavy users, no evidence of a link to cancer. What is clear is that there are studies out there that suggest cannabis shrinks tumors in the lungs, stomachs, and brain, and acts as a lung cleaner or smoked herbal expectorant, like mullein or kinnicknick. What is clear is that tobacco is one of the most toxic herbs, while cannabis is one of the least toxic. What is clear is that no one has yet died of cannabis-related lung cancer. 17. The prohibition of marijuana serves an important governmental purpose in the war against drugs. In my submission, this may be true. The war against some drugs, the war against dark-skinned people's drugs, the war against nature's drugs, or the war against human autonomy and self-sufficiency may be totally based upon cannabis prohibition as a keystone. If so, all the more reason to kick that keystone out from under this structure of injustice. So to conclude, there exists a list of negative side effects of cannabis prohibition admitted as evidence written into the decision in the lower courts. Please consider adding the following concerns to that list. The prohibition of cannabis is truly a war and humankind is tired of war. It benefits monetarily a few drug war profiteers and pill pushers, the richest and whitest. It rests upon an ideological basis which, in the age of information, loses credibility daily. If you count the witch hunts, the drug war may very well be the longest running war in the world. If you count the chemical warfare, the spraying of coca and coca farmers in Colombia, if you count the mass executions for drug dealing in China, if you count how the CIA and Ollie North use the drug war to fund their dirty wars, it could also be the largest and most brutal war in the world. The choice your honors face is simple. The nightmare of ever increasing fines for smoking pot, folks in jail in lieu of fines, forced abstinence-based treatment, urine samples, group therapy, children being taken away from their parents, community service, an institution similar to slavery, drive-by shootings in Washington, D.C., chemical warfare in South America, and the mass executions in China, all for the future of Canada or the rest of the world, or alternatively, the much more pleasant, excuse me, officer, could you point me to the pot cafe of Vancouver and Holland, and perhaps one day the gotta pick up that prescription heroin before I pick up the kids and drive them to the ball game of Switzerland and Germany and the United Kingdom. Relegalization would also take a big chunk out of the poverty that comes with the monopoly economy, creating a large labor-intensive herbal healthcare economy and freedom tourist economy. Relegalization will also open up the industrial and nutritional hemp, medicinal herb, organic fertilizer and alternative medicine economies to investment and growth. I wish I had time to explain how hemp is the key to nutrition, our immune systems, and environmental sustainability, but the drug war side of the issue must be dealt with, or the red tape that's killing the infant industrial hemp industry in the cradle will never be removed. The fact is, humans 
and cannabis live in symbiosis. According to the history section of the extended version of the Senate report, this herb meets all the historical criteria to qualify as the tree of life found in many religions. Its leaves are in many ways for the healing of the nations. Please do not uh, overlook the industrial and environmental and sustainability issues that surround industrial hemp before you doom Canadian farmers to all that red tape forever. Relegalization would mean the freeing up of our best and brightest to pursue other justice and peace issues while providing an opportunity to reflect on the causes and preventions of war in general. Ending this war is our best shot at ending all war. The world needs this right now more than ever. It is commonly said that Canada cannot pursue a drug policy or any policy independent of the USA. But I would just like to point out the long history of Canada setting a good example for the United States when it came to ending slavery, ending alcohol prohibition, giving women the right to vote, or recognizing Cuba, or giving the draft dodgers sanctuary, ending the death penalty, banning DDT, and a host of other social issues. The recent hesitation shown in Nevada uh, shows is, is not a sign that the drug war is here to say, it's a sign that Americans, once again, need our leadership. History has provided many examples of how very little it takes to stop the worst tyranny dead in its tracks. It just takes someone with authority to say a few reasonable words in public. Please, I beg your honors, do not threaten this beautiful flower with possible extinction without first opening up the evidence bag, breaking open the buds, and smelling the sweet, fruity aroma. Nothing nature provides that smells so sweet should ever be illegal. And please, do not doom this sensitive, caring, compassionate herbal community to possible extinction without first voicing any concerns your honors may have about re-legalization, here and now. If you disagree with anything my associates or I have said, please say so, but not in your decision, here, now, giving us a chance to address those concerns. If your honors are not 100% on me, on moving to full legalization right now. If you're not with me on that, tell me why, or else myself and millions of others will be left with too many horrible, nagging doubts about this war and this Constitution and what it truly means to be free and equal. A discussion of your concerns regarding complete re-legalization of the entire cannabis community will benefit both the justice found in the Constitution and the justice found in our hearts. And that's my uh, speech to the court. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to shorten it down some again. We're going to put it up uh, on uh, POT TV and provide you links where you can see it evolve. And I'm going to say the uh, final version, the tight, tight, tight version in uh, the Supreme Court of Canada, December 13th, 2002 in a few days time. So stay tuned for that. That should be up uh, on C-SPAN.